Look, plug. Look that. She's going to be there so you go. pleased. Is she? When she opens that Christmas day. Is she? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's the joke present. And actually then you have a diamond ring or something yeah. or a necklace. Well, let's not get carried away. Yeah, no, let's. Every week up and down the country, Britain's automotive history gets bought, sold, auctioned and bartered. How much that, mate? You wouldn't take 20 for it? No. Was that all right for a tenner? Oh, mate, I'll kill you. I'm Henry Cole, and this is my best mate, Sam Lovegrove, and we're going to be touring the country looking for 24 karat junk. We're going to visit auctions, shed sales and auto jumbles, 20 quid? 25. Aiming to rummage our way to riches by buying up and restoring other people's junk and then selling it on for a tidy profit. Ahead of us, we've got a whole summer of buying and selling. But will we end up in debt or in clover? Welcome to Junk and Disorderly. Junk and Disorderly. Hey, is that your brushette? Uh, yes, for cleaning the stock. <laughs> hey, well, welcome to Junk and Disorderly. Now then, you may remember last time, eh, we had a good day at the Tractor Spares event, didn't we? Great day. We sold numerous trinkets and fended off an Irish geezer who wanted to get our field marshal cheap. Five. No. Right here, we're doing better, eh? No, no, we're not doing it. Five thousand three hundred and let the bike. No. <laughs> But most important of all, we sold not one, but two motorbikes. Yeah, why not? Come on then. Yeah, good. 750. This time, though, we are on a mission, as always, for new stock. Now, normally, we would be going to an auto jumble or an auction first up. This time, though, we're going to go to a shed. Mainly because my mate Neil has decided to let us in again. Now, I've been there before, but he's got some proper gear, mate. Yeah, that sounds fantastic. I mean, I haven't had a proper shed rubbish in ages. No, absolutely. Yeah. So we're going to start proceedings off with a small shed visit. Actually, it's not small, it's quite large. So forget the jumbles for once. Let's head for that shed. Now, I know it's weird that we're going to a shed to start things off with, but it is a special treat, and also Neil phoned and kind of, man, I've been to Neil's before, and it has what we call a fair plethora, yeah, of different requisites. We got combines, right? We got trackers. Uh, we got four by four stuff. We've got motorbikes. We've got cans. We've got ephemera. Got any hand-built French pre-war exotic cars? Oh, there's a whole shed dedicated to those. <laughs> Do you take it as an affront when I call you a hippie? <laughs> uh, no. That's nice, because you are. <laughs> Two gallons later, we're there. Neil, hey, great to see nice you to see again, you. mate. Right. That's Sammy. Right. Nice to meet you. <clears throat> now, Neil has the most wonderful things, but I have to tell you, he's a difficult man to buy off. Mm. Are you? Do you uh, think you still are, mate, or yeah. is the stuff that is available? I might be able to be bought. <laughs> well, I wasn't thinking of you, obviously. <laughs> so, look, right, have you still got lots of tractors and stuff? I have, yes, have yeah, far too many. Oh, mate. Too many you know? tractors. Too many tractors. I heard that. Yeah, exactly. Did you <laughs> well, hear that? My wife says that. You see, the wife says that. Where is she? It's I not think, here. Yeah, there you go. You see, so we've just got Neil to price things off. That might be difficult. Mate, so look, we'll have a rummage about and then yeah, we'll help yourself. come and ask yeah, you. That's great. Yeah? Yeah. Good stuff. I think it's that way from what I remember. Mate, we'll see you in a bit. See you in a bit. All right. Straight away, Neil's first barn is a haven of loveliness. Item number one, a Willis Jeep. Small headlights. Yeah. How many bar grill? Nine. Yeah, good. <clears throat> Nine bar grill. World War II Jeep with a small headlight. Oh, yes. Now, <clears throat> am I right in saying that an awful lot of stuff is going down in value uh, at the moment? Those things just keep on rising, baby. 
Yeah, and I can see why. I mean, they're very usable, aren't they? Well, we should know, mate. I mean, I haven't actually <clears throat> really sold the one we did a few years ago, have I? No, but you've certainly driven it. I've certainly driven yeah. it. Great family transport. That's what I tell my wife, Janie. And actually, she does get involved and yeah. enjoys it. Talking about family transport, Unimog. First manufactured in 1948 and still in production today, the Unimog is the workhorse's workhorse. It's equally at home in the farmyard or the Parry Dakar rally and is the quintessential big boy's toy. It's half truck, half tractor. I think they're registered for the road as a tractor often. Oh, really? an agricultural vehicle, yeah, because they can carry so much weight, pull so much weight, but that meant they were adaptable for so many different purposes. I drove one of these off-road in Yorkshire years and years ago, and I've never really driven an off-roader where I genuinely thought that the trees should watch out. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, nothing will stop it. And talking about vehicles that make fully grown trees go weak at the knees, just look at this Fowler crawler. Creepy it is. That Absolutely is really nice. Gorgeous, it's the that. condition, isn't it? You know, it's got hardly any paint on it and no real damage. I mean, that is excellent. Yeah, that's proper, man. I could take home any of Neil's crawlers or his Unimog, but would he part with it? That's rather lovely. It's very nice. Yeah, yeah. No. No, no, sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> how yeah, much? Really, are you sure? No, I'm it didn't sure. even get to how much. No, no, how right? much? No, There's always no, a price. No, no, it's not a price on that one. No, no, no? I, I can't sell it. No. To Neil, yeah. that Unimog is priceless. Should we move on? All right. Yeah. Reluctantly. Are you sure it's priceless? I'm sure. Okay, yeah, it's, priceless. it's priceless. Fifteen hundred quid. <laughs> <laughs> when it's cheap. Uh, no, Henry. No, no, no. No, no, no. I'm not no. even going to ask no. about that. Where'd you get that from? I bought it through a dealer. I've been after it for quite a while, though. I just wanted something big. Yeah, well, I think <laughs> big toy. I, that, think, yeah. I think he's succeeded. <laughs> Outside, Neil's mantra, big is better, is much in evidence. One Saladin armoured car. I had a Corgi toy one of these. All oh, right. And I've still got it in its box. I'll show you when we get home, if you're interested. We can compare it to this. <laughs> compare and contrast. And more to Sam's taste. One comma two ton truck. Sam, obviously, because of his grassroots as a hippie, yeah, is immediately drawn to stuff like that. Why? Because he could live in it. It's got this really substantial frame that you could build on, even above the cab. Look, you could go two floors up with that. Knowing Neil, the odds of him selling either of these are about the same as me winning Miss World as a bearded lady. But touch wood, there could be some smaller items that he might part company with. Oh, yes. This is what I remember it to be like. There are shelves full of trinkets and odd vehicles poking out of corners. The Series 1 Landy he'll never sell, but in a dusty corner, I spot something. Let me yeah. just get this out. Now, that's in... Oh. OK. So, probably, what do you reckon, late 50s, early 60s? Yeah, okay. so dealership sign, basically. Desktop sort of thing, look, little foot on the back. I mean, look, it could be a nice little owner, depending on the price, just as is shipping it on. Yes. You know yeah, I mean? yeah, it's original, isn't it, apart from the tinfoil. Yeah, well, the tin foil is probably relatively easy to extract yeah. with your calibre and talent. I think I might manage that. Continuing the retro theme, there's a rather dinky little record player behind it. Oh, hang on, hey, look. <clears throat> oh, look at that. That's quite sweet. That's 60s. Yeah. Mains power, is that good or bad, Sammy? Not so good for our sort of audience because people like them to go in the back of their car. You know, it would go really well in a mini Clubman or something like oh, that. Oh, I see what you mean. I'll tell yeah. you what, though, it's oh. got a stylus on it because it can be very difficult to buy the correct stylus. That looks like a universal one, but... We've got, what are we going to do? Wipe it? Doesn't matter if it don't yeah. go. It's a project for someone. Yeah, it's worth a go, isn't it? Yeah, all right, well, that's a potential. Yeah. So a few highlights then, but in a shed like this, it's always worth doing a bit of burrowing. Catch. Sorry. 
I haven't had a pillow fight like this since dawn three at Eton. More's the pity. No, can you find someone to put this? <laughs> this isn't the point of the exercise. <laughs> Look, stop. Enough. <sighs> Maybe just one more. <laughs> Come on then, what have you got in there, please? That's it. Finally. Oh, it's a bike. It's a bike. What kind of a bike? Oh, my God. It's a Veloset LE. Yes. The Veloset LE is a real curio. Released in 1947, long before the first Italian scooters appeared in Britain, it was an early attempt to produce a clean, user-friendly bike for the masses. It was actually really modern and a super thing, but it was probably a little ahead of its time. Velocets do have a cult following, but there's a catch. They are very complicated to work on. Water-cooled, flat twin. How many cups of tea to get that running? Well, getting it running is an unknown quantity because they're so complicated to work on. If we needed to get involved and take the engine apart, we wouldn't bother. So it needs to be cheap enough for us to pass it on as a project. OK, you see, that's actually quite a nice idea because on the store we haven't actually in recent times had what's known as a project. So it's a non-runner, right? Yeah. OK, it is what it is, but we're just flipping it for, you know, 100 quid profit or something. Do you know what yeah. I mean? It'd be great to unseize it. Do you reckon 300? Yeah, fine at that. We're actually doing him a favour. Yeah, yeah. Getting yeah. rid of that. Yeah. Whether he sees it like that, we'll find out shortly. But in another dark corner... Hold the horses, mate. I spot something utterly delectable. You. Hey, that's a nice neck. Notwin. I don't know Notwin, but that's a beautiful you picture. Check that out. Yeah. That is an absolutely beautiful pyramid five-gallon can. It's a Notwin Oils, which is rare. In this condition, it is utterly, utterly stupendous. Look at that car on there. Mm. And also, original cap, which yeah. often is difficult, as we know. I would pay up to £300 for that. Yeah, you know, not very long ago, I'd have been poking you in the eyes and laughing and walking away. Mm. I now know. Should we go and get him? Let's hope that this time there'll be less no, no, no and more wee, wee, wee. That's French, you know. <clears throat> Come on, Neil. Oh. Now then, mate. I'm just hoping we might get a result somewhere along the line. Mm? Well, you try. <sighs> now, there is a little Triumph illuminated sign. Would that be available? Yes. OK. 50 quid. All right. Huh? OK, shake the man by the hand. Now, Neil, underneath the tarpaulin, we have found what looks like a Velocet Ellie in slight disrepair, Sam. Uh, yeah, it seems to be yeah. a bit seized and a few bits taken yeah. apart. Yeah. Have you ever heard it running? Not for a long time. I have heard it in the past. Yeah? yeah. Runs all right? Rattles a little bit. OK. Is that the tinware rattling or is that no, the engine? No, it's, it's the engine rattling. OK. 250 quid. 500. 300. Four. 375? 380. Yeah, come on. Come on, mate. Right, right. Now then, there is a pyramid can over there. Yes. Mm -hmm. Which we both know is a lovely thing. Would that be for sale? It would be if the price was right. 250 quid. No, not enough. Mm. No. 400. I'll give you 300. 350. There you go. 350. See? Can I do something else though on the deal, even though we're shaking on it? Right. Could you throw in the gramophone? Yeah. There you go. Neil, we started well. off today <laughs> not getting very far. Now we've gone quite a long way, actually, yeah. haven't we? Yeah, not bad. Yeah? Yeah. Brilliant. Mate, Good. thank you so much. And most right. importantly, as ever, firstly, lovely to see you. And thank secondly, you. thanks for letting us have a no run. Yeah, great. Not Sam has volunteered to get the van out. <laughs> All right, that's good. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Next up, we crack on with the Velocet. Achcha! Mind your thumb. And after that, it's strictly come restoring. 
Oh, why not? To celebrate. Yeah. Are you leading? Yeah, always. We've just had a great day out at Neil's farm. Though he's a man who likes to say... No. No, no, no. No, Henry. In the end, he said yes enough times for us to go home happy. Back in the shed, uh, we've got the good... That's wrong. We've got the good, the quite bad at the moment, and the ugly. Mm. We've also got a Veloset, hey? Well, bits of it, Sammy. Now, come on, let's talk about it, cos really, I don't really... How much was it? 380 Three... quid. 380 sheets. How do you think we're going to make money out of this one? I know not. No. I think we're all right. I quite like it. I mean, it had a little bit of a surprise taking it out of the shed when the engine tried to fall out on the floor. And it didn't let try it. to fall out, son. It did. Hence the fluorescent green high-vis <laughs> strap. Yeah. What the heck are we going to do with this? Well, I'm not confident we're actually going to get it running and riding, but I think if we just wipe it over and clean it and bolt it all back together so that its next prospective owner can see that it's complete and ready for restoration. I think that's where our profit margin is. The music to my ears. And talking of music, we do have our little Dan set. Are we ready to go bang? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Should we just do it? Go on. <laughs> it's running! Hang Look, on. it's going around. Look, here. It works. That's amazing. Fully restored, mate. <sighs> I just had a quick tinker with it, obviously, because I'm so knowledgeable on gramophone records that it now spins. Hey, we can... <laughs> what do they call it? Scratch it. Scratch it, mate. <laughs> Kick it. As for the Notwin can, I'll restore it for my own collection. But the Triumph sign should be a money spinner. This is going to be amazing. Because Pete is going to come here, our mate Pete, who probably is one of the most creative people I've ever met. And he is going to redo this sign to mint. I actually really like that. So I think do I. If it comes out nicely, which no doubt knowing Pete's work, it will. Uh, we'll keep it. <laughs> While I go off to make some tea, you know what I mean? I leave Sam in charge of the velo. Unlike traditional bikes, the Veloset LE did not have a frame. Instead, it was of monocoque construction, with the engine, gearbox and front suspension attached directly to the bodywork. So Sam's first task is to reinsert the bolts that hold everything together. It might be a bit of an ugly duckling, but in fact the LE was very advanced and innovative in its engineering. Before the war, Veloset had been known for their TT-winning sports bikes. The LE was their first attempt to create a new market for a mass-produced, easy-to-operate bike. Only problem with this one is the engine seized. How are you getting on there? Thirsty, say uh, that. Yeah, all right, mate. What it's a... Oh, no! You're pouring it everywhere. Honey... Ha, 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 ha. Why can't you just have normal... Take the teapot! Why can't you just have normal tea? It is normal tea. Well, it's not normal. It's normal to you, man, not to humanity, is it? Oh. What's that? Honey in there? Honey made by monks. OK. <clears throat> We've got ourselves a cup of tea, eventually. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, we've also got a Vela set. What do you think? Oh. That's actually quite nice. That's all right, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Oh. OK, so Sam probably hasn't uh, freed up the engine, have you? Have no, you? but I've put the whole bike together. Have you really? Yeah, look, it's all tidy. Everything's tight, everything's in the right place. But, but we're still seized? Yeah, we're well, still seized. I mean, I haven't seized. been away that long, have I? No. No. OK, right, so we are now going to unseize a Veloset yep. collectively. Yeah. Mm -hmm. First things first, Sam removes the cylinder heads. We need to clean all this up to get the pistons moving. I start proceedings with a screwdriver and a wire brush, and then Sam fits a whizzy wheel to his cordless and gives it what dental hygienists call a deep clean, a.k.a. ten minutes of torture. Oh, yeah. Look, it's a little bit oily. I can see the clean steel of the bore already. Mm-hmm. 
I meanwhile start on my beautiful Notwin oil can with a duster and some furniture polish. Pyramid cans were very popular in the 1920s and 30s, the idea being that the can had a built-in spout which made it easier to decant the contents into smaller cans and jugs. Hey, don't rub too hard. I'm Imagine not... if all those letters came off. Oh, dear, I've been deep trouble with my emotion. Actually, you've just revealed SAE 40, so it's a 40-weight monograde oil. See? That's double the value of it. Yeah. <laughs> Once the cylinders have been cleaned, our next job is to loosen the pistons. The Veloset had two horizontally opposed cylinders, so we can work on either side of the bike. Our weapons of choice? A variety of hammers and pieces of wood. But unlike the crew from Peaky Blinders, the key here is to take it gently, working around the edge of the piston, rather than whacking it in the middle. Achcha! Mind your thumb. I wish you'd said that about a second earlier. <laughs> After ten minutes of banging, we're ready. Unlike most bikes which had to be kicked, the LE had a hand starter. Should we try it? Moving on up. Handle! Ready? Oh, and it's water you... music. Oh, Mate, that didn't just go up and down in the bore, it flew. Weirder than that. Look, the oil pump's working. That's really what? weird. Look, look at the oil line. So look, right, we've got ourselves a velo that's freed up. And now, as a restoration project, we can say, you've just added value massive. We can say, it's got compression and it turns over. Hey, now look, right, I think it's time for celebration. Really? Yeah, because I'm going to try something and see if it works. Remember that, Dan said? Oh, one for the record. One, baby, for the record. Should we try it? Yeah. I think I'm we in. should. Right, OK. So look, right, the can's clean, a thing that I've been dreaming about doing. The velo turns over. Uh, uh, and never, ever have your thumbs or fingers on a record like that. OK. Forget dancing on ice. Forget Strictly. If you want to see two men waltzing on primetime television, Watch this space. Yeah. Are you leading? Yeah, always. That's a bit weird. Yeah. <laughs> it's the bearded lady. Uh, this is a bit weird. I've got a better idea. What's that? OK, wait there. I'm waiting. <laughs> oh, don't do that, man. Don't, don't do a bit. <clears throat> OK, things that go on in a shed, eh? So look, right, the record player works, the velo turns over, and the can is cleaned. All we've got to do now is put the tea on for Pete, who's going to be here in a couple of days, to uh -uh, restore the triumph side. Happy days. Come on. <laughs> We're mixing it up now. Hey, I haven't danced like this since dawn four at Eton, but that's another story. Next up, I get dragged back through history. I think I've just been reacquainted with my oh, worst God. nightmare. And get all excited over our triumph sign. Craftsmanship like this is hard to find. Young is We've been restoring a Veloset LE, either the ugliest bike ever built or the most innovative, depending on your point of view. It's so crazy weird that actually I quite like it. And talking of British bikes, we've just heard that the London Motorcycle Museum is about to shut and they're selling off some of their stock. So like Whippets chasing their pet rabbit, we've hot-footed it down to West London to see what we can buy. We're here, are we? This is it, man. God, how incongruous is this? Yeah, it's amazing, the middle eh? of e is it Ealing, Greenford? What is it? Greenford. Greenford, yeah. and then suddenly, amongst all these semi-detached, we've got this: the London Motorcycle Muil. Oh, mate, I'm a bit nervous. Come on. Okay, come on. Then. <gasps> oh, 
Oh. Boo. Philippa? Yes, hi. Henry, how are you? Very well, thank and you. And this no, is Sally. Hello. Hello. The museum is the personal creation of Philippa's other half, Bill Crosby. And as you can see, there are plenty of fantastic bikes. They've been here since 1997, but in their infinite unwisdom, the local council have decided to turf them out. The bikes are going back to the owners or to auction at Stafford, but some smaller stuff is up for grabs. There's lots and lots of bits and bobs. Okay, great. Some big, some small. So there should be plenty for you to look at. I have to tell you, outside, my art was going like this. I mean, this, to me, is just something, in one way, very sad, yeah? But in well, another way... So. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, in another way, I mean, cool. What a privilege to be able to look round here, see if we can buy the odd trinket. Well, do you know what I mean? I hope you find something interesting. Yeah, so do I. And do you know what? I guarantee we will. The next 15 minutes are a quick supermarket sweep. Sam grabs a rat trap carburetor and an oil pump, while I spot a baby shell can. Then, after perusing several cabinets, we move on to the main gallery, where I'm stopped in my tracks. I think I've just been reacquainted with my You've worst got nightmare. A certain look in your eyes I haven't seen in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Two years ago, I took my life into my own hands when I rode this drag bike at North Weald. It's called the Yellow Peril, and it didn't take me long to find out why. <laughs> <laughs> I launch it, launch it. I slip the clutch, and literally at about five miles an hour, it's going like this, right? And it's having a terrible take snap. And now I know, which I didn't know when I was lying on it, but the commentator's going, Henry's got a problem here with this thing. Can he get through the tank slapper? And I open it up. Open it up. I go to about 20 miles an hour. <laughs> and I give up completely. I go back in and Sammy's with one of the most iconic drag racers and a very dear friend, a guy called Pip Heim. And both of them just looked at me and went, don't you go back and get on that thing. Just walk away. I don't think we'll be bidding on that, and none of the bikes are on sale today. But our supermarket sweep continues with an Austin 7 lubrication chart, a nice piece of tinware, an AJS engine diagram, and a mystery lamp. I tell you what, it's one of those pieces at a jumble where people come and chat and think and try to work out what it is, and it lures them into the stand. <clears throat> Then, after paying homage to a rather different type of Veloset. What's that? The Holy Grail of Veloset. It's a Mark IV KTT. So, overhead cam, Isle of Man racer. We meet Pa Crosby to do a little haggling. It doesn't start well. 20 quid. Yeah. Well, I just thought I'd start yeah. proceeding. Yeah, oh, yeah. You know what I mean? I was thinking if I had a bike for it to go on, and I wanted one, It'd be a couple of hundred quid, but to you, a hundred pound. What oh, that? And Sam's rat trap carb is not for sale. Even if I was to offer you 500 quid? Well, I, I was originally, I, I've been offered over a thousand pound for them. Hang on, mm. they're coming to get you, Sam. Fucking <laughs> <in>. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll leave them there no, for a the minute. After that, though, it all goes swimmingly. Well, you, can tenor? Another, you can have another one. Can I have tenner? Tenner. OK, all right, we're in on a tenner on that one. I get a can, and Sam gets an oil pump. 100 quid? Done. Great, thank you very much. Nice can. Who's buying that? Me? You. Yeah, oh, no, the price has just shot up, hasn't it? Eh? It's the boss. You know what I mean? Oh, 30 pound. Yeah, go on, 30 quid. We buy the AJS and the Austin artwork for 50 quid, a Simon I sign for 75, and a Dunlop sign for 100. So a great afternoon shopping, but there may be more to come. All these bikes are going to auction. We actually will be there, but <clears throat> if anything doesn't sell, what's going to happen? I'll bring them back and I'll have, we'll see if we can organise an auto jumble here. Can we come back? Of course you can. Yeah? Come back any time you want to pay me money. at the ranch, we get straight into cleaning mode. There we go, mate, look at that. Three squirts for the sign. A window cleaner. Two for Sammy for good measure. 
Yes, it's just humble window cleaner, but combined with a healthy dose of elbow grease, and it's the perfect solvent for years of rust and grime. Lob it on, mate. Lovely. We give the Dunlop sign the same treatment, and within a few minutes, it looks much better. It costs just £100, but I'm sure it's worth much more. I mean, there are people reproducing these enamel signs, including reproducing the rustiness and the broken enamel. Absolutely. Uh, That's fine, unless they're trying to palm it off as original. Yeah, but it's, actually, it's no surprise that people are doing that when they're fetching, you know, well into the hundreds. Yeah. Okay. Next, we're going to give the two cans a bit of the same treatment. But the real excitement on the resto front is elsewhere. Tomorrow, Pete returns with the Triumph sign. Oh, I hope he's done a good job, would you reckon? Bit nervous about that. We ain't got a lot of time to spare, have we? No, we ain't got a lot of time to spare. But at the same time, if there is one man to do that job, it's the Peter. Mm? Next morning, it's P day. Pete, that is astounding. He likes it because he's polishing. Pete, I mean, tell me, right, how long did that genuinely take you? Ah, uh, I can't remember, Henry. I'm so tired when I finished it. <laughs> what do you reckon, Sammy? I think it's amazing. I mean, that is really proper. Lovely, I tell you what, man, craftsmanship like this is hard to find. OK, it's left to us now to do it justice. <laughs> Our first task is to banish all the baco foil it's been lined with. Sam straightens the frame using his hammer and dolly, and then I hoover up all the leftovers before Sam gives the reflector a fresh coat of rattle can chrome. Then, after fitting a set of four bulbs, we move on to the riskiest stage of all, fitting the glass. This is where all our profit go out the window. Yeah, and our sense of humour is shortly behind it. Yeah, that would be it. Right. All right, so I think we go out this way. Yep. Might just need you to... Hang on. Oh, look, there we go. How beautiful is that? All that remains is to fit it back together and then give it a bit of Blackpool. All right. Be absolutely ready. Yeah. Oh, dear. Blimey. Hmm. Now, look, right, because it's been painted, there are brush marks there, aren't there? Yeah. Yeah? But at the same time, if you look at it from distance, which everyone will do, yeah, what do you think? Uh, I think we need to do something about that, don't you? Well, what do you suggest? It looks like white, fluffy clouds. Yeah. Hang on a minute. I've got a solution. What? Look. Oh, it looks great. Great. OK, we'll be selling it with a light off. Truth is, we've rushed this through and didn't give Pete enough time to paint on a backing coat. For once in my life, I'm going to be serious. Now, hear me out, OK, cos you ain't going to like it. Yeah. This is work in progress. We have a jumble coming up tomorrow. Yeah. Right? To do this properly is going to take time. Yeah. So what if, right, we send it back to Pete yeah. as a complete unit, right, and say to him, Pete, these are the issues, switch it on, see what you think. And he then will repaint it. Yeah, just yeah? back it off with more darker paint. Yeah. Yeah. Just back it off and let him do that. Yeah. Uh, also, it's been broken 30 years at least. Right. What's another three weeks? Exactly. What's another three weeks? Next up, we return to our old stomping ground, the small but perfectly formed Kenley Auto Jumble. Justin, do you know what, mate? I'm not even going to count it. Yeah, I wouldn't, cos you'd find no. it was light. All oh, right. <laughs> well, that's the way it is. <laughs> We've had a busy couple of days restoring our fella set and getting reacquainted with my dodgy past. 
Now we're back at Kenley Airfield in Surrey for one of its regular auto jumbles. Last time round we were here to buy, but this time we want to sell, sell, sell. Well, it's still small and it's still perfectly formed. Welcome to Kenley, the place where we are going to sell loads. Sammy is already bringing out the first tray. Mm? To you. Thank you. <sighs> Careful, that's some of our priciest <laughs> stockage. Uh, yep. There you go, look. We haven't got our illuminated Triumph sign or the Field Marshal tractor, but we've got a stall full of other trinketry, our French moped and our Policia push bike. Our biggest investment is the Velocet. We bought it for 380, but we're hoping to get closer to 900. Keep the cash rolling in, keep the stock moving. Mm? The first sale is a little smaller, though. Our 30 quid Red X sign goes for, uh, 30 quid. Happy days. Thanks, mate. After that, the sales come in thick and fast. 15 quid for the Romac tin. And five for a mudguard. A fiver. Yeah. Yes, here, Bantam. Yep, you know it. 15 quid, right. here it comes. We're doing a roaring trade. And I have to tell you, we're about literally half an hour in and we're surrounded by clients. Mm. And hopefully, we'll sell something big in a minute just to get the morning off with a bang. You're window shopping. Just window shopping. Kenley might be small, but it's got a great vibe. Everyone gets here early, has a good rummage and leaves happy. And we will too, if we can close some bigger deals. So first off, we focus on the bikes. We haven't got paperwork for it, but it is a live file on DVLA. It's good. Look at these elaborate lugs here on there. Yeah, it's quite nice, a local bike, well, Sussex bike as well, isn't it? Oh, is it? What, yeah, TPO? Yeah, I yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a lovely thing. Yeah. You know, I do need 300 quid for it. It's even got its original tour box. Look, original, original, original tool bag with the tools. And it's got that sort of ratted look, hasn't it? Yeah. Just a little bit of oil over it or something. Beautiful. All right, well, we'll have, we'll have a little thing. We'll yeah, go and have yeah, a cup yeah, of tea. Yeah. No immediate sale, but some promise there. The first big items to go are the metal signs. Together, they cost us 175 quid, but the first one sells for a very sweet 150. That That's a deal? deal. Is it? That's a deal. All right, mate. Happy right. days. 150. Thank you so much. Uh, I can even help you load it. <laughs> it's surprisingly heavy. <laughs> <laughs> one down, one to go. I was actually interested in the last sign what you just sold. Oh, I just sold him, oh. mate. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what. 135. It's yours. Yeah. Go on. Then. Go on. Oh, nice one, mate. I'll tell you what, right. that's a good deal. Yeah. Have you got it right there? I think that's right. Yeah, one, that's two, all I've got, then. three. And while I'm counting out the cash, Sam's rustling up a rather unexpected deal with Dave, who's come back to have a third look at our Velocet. I work in a special school with youngsters with behaviour and learning. Yep. And I teach them motor maintenance. Um, obviously, I have to buy it myself, but um, I'm interested in it for them. But obviously, that is because I'm investing personal money. Yeah. I don't want to invest very much. Yeah. And what would you be wanting to invest? Because <laughs> <laughs> I've got to tell you, mate, I'm right with you. OK, so I think what you're doing is unbelievably brilliant, right? Agreed? Yeah, absolutely. And obviously, I want you know 14-year-olds to crawl all over it and break every single bolt and stud. <laughs> yeah, well, I tell you what, they've got a good start. <laughs> Make us an offer, understanding that, and that we're here to help as much as we can. Well, I was looking at sort of the 500 mark. We are a charity. Well, actually, as I say, it's me that has to pay for it. But um... do, you, do you know what I'd like to do? Make it 475. That's good. I told you we were up for it. Yeah, Don't you reckon, mate? Isn't it? I think. Yeah. And what's wonderful is that young people are crawling all over an old bike. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And you're teaching them. And if you're up for it, um, seriously, right. yeah. 
because I mean retail, we wanted 900 for it. I know what you wanted. Yeah. But I think we just about get our money back there. Yeah. And if it's going to a great course like that, oh, it really is. Then it will, uh, um, it will certainly occupy a fair amount of time for sure. Yeah. <laughs> So not the 900 quid we were expecting, but if our velo can get future generations stripping British bikes rather than church roofs, then we'll go home happy. So Justin, are you here with a folding then? <laughs> yeah, good lad. Hey look, is that the school then? It is at Row Hill. Hey Justin, do you know what mate? I'm not even going to count it. Yeah, I wouldn't because you'd find nah. it was light. All right. Okay. <laughs> well, that's the way it is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I just trust this man. Yeah, it's fine, Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You probably just borrowed that off somebody, <laughs> haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> but then at the same time, I think he might get found out. For the rest of the day, we bask in the warm glow of the righteous, while never forgetting the heady pleasure of the profitable. Hey, cheers, mate. We sell the AGS artwork for 25 quid. Happy days, Roy. Thank yeah. you very much. Cheers. Our £15 ammeter for... 65. Great. And sort out Mike's Christmas present to his wife for a mere 20 quid. Plug. She's going to be there so you go. pleased. Is she? When she opens that Christmas day. Is she? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's the joke present. And actually then you have a diamond ring or something yeah. or a necklace. Well, let's not get carried away. Yeah, no, let's. In a final flurry of activity, Sam rides off to drum up interest on our French moped. Roll up, roll up, get your mobile out. only 500 quid, he's going off-road, it may not come back. But returns with a rather larger bike that he's taken a shine to. Look at that, that is what is called a Sunbeam Double Deluxe, because it's got two engines. Mate. Well, it's not every day, is that it? That is so cool. Where'd you get that from? You bought it? No, not yet. Yeah, see you later, mate. We won't be buying that. And before he gets any more ideas, I think it's time to take a cue from the other stall holders and retire to the van to take stock and count the readies. Today has been one of my favourite days at a jumble. What about you, son? Yeah, I've had a great... I haven't spoken to you all we day. We haven't? Yeah, I've been hey, so look, busy. Mate. Well, I'll speak to you now. Yeah. We've done well. Now then. There is 985 sheets here. How fantastic. And also, please bear in mind that we didn't, for obvious reasons, bring the Triumph sign or the Field Marshal. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we have sold really well today. And I'll tell you what's gone massively well are the 10 signs. Yeah, that was fantastic, wasn't it? We made some good money on them. Just looking down the list here, we made 60 quid on the Simon Eyes, 50 yeah. quid on the Dunlop. But what's so important today we made the princely sum of £95 on that Veloset project. Yeah. Uh, where we did have it on for 900 quid, that would yeah. have been a vast profit. But what we have done, hopefully, is inspired a lot of young people with heritage engineering. Yeah, it's perfect. I mean, there was lots of interest in it. We could have got six or seven hundred quid for it easily today, yeah. but I all couldn't agree more. It's going to exactly the right home, and yeah. you've got to support that kind of project. It's bang on, man. Yeah. You and I, mate, are singing from the same yeah. Blackberry or whatever they call and it. And we still actually made profit. I think we'll say SSQPR, isn't it? What's that? Super small, quick profit return. All yeah, quickly. super small profit, quick return but to a great cause, yeah. so that's fantastic. So in total, you'll be pleased to know, we have made 270 quid out of our new stock, right? Which is happy days, man, taking 985 quid in total, right? Uh, that gives us a running total for the series so far of 2,693 of your finest British pounds. That, my friend, is a right result, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah? Excellent. And also, I think we've done something which has spiritually lifted our hearts, right? Yeah. A Veloset Ellie that's going to be appreciated by the next generation. Yeah.